Londra Sylvester, the part-time rapper better known as KTS Dre or Cutthroat Draco, had recently been freed from the infamous Cook County Jail, his girlfriend having paid $5,000 to secure his release the day before. In the months leading up to his release, prosecutors had filed a petition contesting KTS Dre being granted bail, but the judge wasn't having it, setting bail at $50,000. All that KTS Dre needed was a 10% down payment to secure his freedom. In short succession, the money was paid, with KTS Dre being seen leaving the jail, a huge smile beaming across his face. Fitted with electronic monitoring as per conditions of his bail, KTS Dre was fortunate to be out of jail. However, he was still restricted, and wasn't out of the woods yet. Having to deal with his legal troubles, KTS Dre was probably apprehensive about having to wait for the resolution of his gun case. In reality, he should have been concerned about the fact that the opposition had the drop on him. Somehow they knew where he'd be. As KTS Dre, his sister and grandmother made their way across the street to their car, carnage erupted. Simultaneously, two suspects ran up on KTS Dre, with both shooters letting off shots at the rapper. Unable to take cover, all three people were shot, with KTS Dre's grandmother being hit in the knee, and his sister narrowly avoiding a face shot, herself having received a minor graze wound. The shooters disappeared as fast as they arrived, with the suspects fleeing in two cars, both seen speeding away in different directions. An investigation began, with police immediately learning that the victim was a gang member with a past history of criminal charges. KTS Dre was well known on social media and to CPD, having been arrested for a multitude of crimes ranging from gambling, criminal trespass, battery, robbery and even first-degree murder. The shooter specifically targeted Sylvester, who judging by this autopsy diagram, died almost instantly. The murder was classic overkill, with roughly 64 shell casings having been left at the scene. Somehow, Sylvester's family had survived the onslaught of bullets, but now likely live with traumatic mental scarring, having witnessed him die in such a sickening way. In fact, his mother would later post to Facebook that she couldn't even do a proper funeral for her dead son, as the entire situation in Chicago is way too volatile. Despite the case actually gaining plenty of media attention, no resolution has come about. Years have now flown by, and as of 2024, law enforcement is seemingly not interested, or unable to pin this murder on anyone specifically. Regardless of a lack of evidence or suspects, that doesn't stop people from speculating on the case, with many suggesting and pointing fingers at the group most notoriously known for beefing with KTS Dre, a group known as NLMB. The two gangs have been into it for years. Much of the bloodshed has been wrapped about in drill music videos over the years, with KTS Vaughn, brother of KTS Dre, playing a big role in the dissing of NLMB members via his drill songs. KTS Vaughn, real name Devin Davis, was an up-and-coming Chicago rapper who was just starting to grow in popularity. Like his older brother, KTS Vaughn was rumored to be heavily involved in participating in BS within his community. Since 2012, KTS Vaughn had been releasing music, with some of his older tracks being, Gang Gang, Kobe, Get Whacked and All I Know. The older songs contain some of the most savage lyrics, and with the ongoing war, it is no surprise that people began taking notice. Most of Vaughn's songs became popular because they featured highly disrespectful lyrics, with his songs mocking dead gang members from NLMB, Sircon City and other gang sets that KTS and its allies were at war with. Much of these beefs have been broke down already on YouTube, therefore I won't be discussing these in this video. 2015 would be the year that KTS Vaughn really began to blow up within the Chicago music scene. His most popular songs, Kill to Survive and Street Life, both released. Both contained classic drill imagery, featuring gritty visuals, violent lyrics and sinister, demonic instrumentals. By this stage, KTS Vaughn was taking music much more seriously, but his use of pills, the addictive drink known as lean, and dissing of his opposition, would cost him his life. When you live by the sword, you are very likely to die by the sword. While standing outside, likely under the influence of lean and pills, an unknown shooter ambushed Devin Davis from a gangway. Paperwork indicates that he was hit somewhere in the range of 18 to 25 plus times. The suspect continued dumping rounds into his lifeless body, before fleeing in a black Camaro. Like with KTS Dre, Vaughn had been targeted, and had left a friend's house having received a phone call. With the same overkill element, it isn't a stretch to say that the same group of offenders could have been responsible. Devin Davis's death hit his brother hard. In an interview with Blind Folks Vision 1 on YouTube, Sylvester spoke on his deceased brother. The entire interview is both sad and depressing, as Dre smokes while speaking fondly on Vaughn. He looks, sounds, and acts like a broken man, mentioning the fact that if his brother was still alive, they'd both be rich and out of the miserable situation that they were in. Vaughn was the better rapper, and his brother was there to support his life path. Sadly, the loss had almost stunted Dre, who by this stage had been in and out of jail, 
having also lost his father to gun violence in 2016, the year following his brother's murder. Now, I'll get on to the murder tied to KTS Dre, a murder which occurred not long before his interview dropped. Many surmised that he had killed multiple people, with paperwork confirming that he was involved in at least one murder. It should be said that this paperwork only surfaced after Dre had passed away, and doesn't appear as though he was ever charged or convicted in this crime. A drive-by shooting resulted in the death of Kenneth Summers, known to friends and family as Magic. Part of NLMB, Magic had been sitting in a car, talking to someone else when two suspect cars, a white Volkswagen sedan, and a dark-colored Chevy Trax with a Missouri license plate, drove by and opened fire. Bullets shattered the rear window, with one of these bullets striking Magic in the back of the head. He and another passenger were hit, with Magic passing away on a patch of grass at the scene. A call to police would have loaned Sylvester being caught with his pants down. KTS Dre and a woman would be found lovemaking in the dark-colored SUV. For whatever reason, KTS Dre hadn't thought to ditch the car, and was now spreading more of his DNA in the backseat. Why anyone would knowingly do this is mind-boggling, but this just goes to show you the mentality of KTS Dre. Having lost most of his family, and with little left to lose, he was on a path of self-destruction. Although Sylvester's name is blurred out, his time and date of death, alongside the description of events, helped to confirm it being him. Dre was not confirmed as being the actual shooter in the case, and so it's unclear if he was driving the car, or assisting in some other way. Regardless of what he was doing, his life only continued spiraling downhill. Having spent years in jail but avoided serious jail time, KTS Dre would spend a lot of his time on Instagram Live, having pointless heated discussions with his rivals. Entertaining the BS is never worth doing, as Dre could have just as easily focused on making money, rather than seeking attention and validation from his opposition. To his credit, Cutthroat Draco appeared in music videos, collaborating with other artists, but he was no way near as popular as Vaughn. Still, KTS Dre became widely known for getting into arguments on Instagram Live, and it looked as though he had something to prove. In reality, he should have focused on himself and counted his blessings, given the many second chances that had been given to him. KTS Dre had been arrested in 2013 for a murder, and had been implicated in Kenneth Summers' murder. The fact that he was never found guilty for either, and then continued to make bad decisions is unacceptable. KTS Dre is now gone, but the worst part about this case is the fact that the people mentioned weren't necessarily evil people. Rather, they were hurt individuals who glorified a gangster image, whilst paying the price for living that way. KTS Vaughn turned to pills and other substances to cope with his past actions and problems, which only momentarily blocked out the pain. Dealing with emotions can be difficult, and because of this, most men resort to suppressing them or end up crying about their feelings to a therapist, which results in you becoming another lab experiment for Big Pharma. To prevent all of these unnecessary problems, I'd suggest reading about stoicism. Being able to control your emotions is more important now than ever before, as Western society continues to see murder after murder, often the result of a trivial argument or dispute. Stoic men don't tend to kill people, but emotional men do. Become a stronger man today, both mentally and physically. Men like KTS Dre and KTS Vaughn, had the power to control their actions but instead chose to act out of emotion, making terrible momentary decisions which caused their lives to turn upside down. Learn from their tragic cases, and create the best version of yourself for your friends, family and society. Rest in peace to everyone in this video.